Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to do something special, something unique. I'm going to take you to um, four, maybe five, I'm not 100% sure exactly how to count them. I'm going to take you to four or five um, small, unique sites uh, here around Jerusalem that are generally not uh, visited uh, by the tourists. Um, they're, as we would say, they're slightly off the, um, the, the, the beaten track. Anyways, we're starting here um, in the um, Kedron Valley uh, on the eastern side of Jerusalem. You can see behind me um, the eastern wall of the Temple Mount, the eastern wall of Jerusalem. For, for more information about that, you can visit my um, video about the walls of Jerusalem. Anyways, we are going to be starting the tour uh, here to the east, to my left, uh, down here in the Kidron Valley over here. So anyways, come, let's go. Welcome to the Kidron Valley and our um, first uh, monument uh, behind me. Uh, this is Avshalom's pillar. Of course, Avshalom was the wayward son of King David. Um, according to the tradition, Avshalom uh, builds a monument or a pillar to himself in the valley east of Jerusalem because he doesn't have any children himself. The problem is, of course, uh, that this monument uh, was built uh, about a thousand years after Avshalom. It has been dated to the first century um, uh, CE and of course Absalom and David uh, would have existed a thousand years before that about 3,000 years ago. Uh, anyway, so this is Absalom's pillar. Let's go and see the other two down here in the Kidron Valley. The first monument here is behind me. Uh, this is called um, the tomb or the monument to Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah was a priest. He's mentioned in the book of Chronicles, uh, and he's not mentioned in a positive way. Um, according to the story in, the, in, in, in Chronicles, um, he rebels against God, and because of that, uh, he's stoned to death. And so this is um, um, Zechariah's uh, tomb. And then over here, to the um, uh, left of it, uh, we have uh, the monument or the tomb of Bnei Chazer, uh, the sons of Chazer. Um, uh, the sons of Chazer, they were a priestly family who also lived in the first century. Both of these have been dated to the first century. Um, uh, it should be noted that uh, I say on purpose uh, the sons of Chazer uh, because uh, some people mistakenly say it's Chazer, which means pig, and we just want to make sure that uh, this priestly family uh, are not called pigs. Um, uh, there is. Uh, um, so both of these uh, sites have been dated to the first century. Um, uh, some people will tell you that the monument to the right, what I referred to a moment ago as Zechariah's monument, is actually the nephesh or the soul of the burial tomb up there to the left. Um, a nephesh is a soul, and all burial tombs, certainly in the Second Temple period, would have had a monument that was referred to as a soul. Anyways, um, let's go on to our next site, which is just to the north of the Old City, and then we'll visit our last two sites um, in um, the Old City. Uh, welcome to the uh, Tomb of the Kings. Really quite impressive. Okay, you can look at the wonderful um, steps leading down. Uh, I believe there are 29 steps, and then opposite them are um, two, or maybe one, one over here, and another one here with the double gate. Uh, two small uh, burial tombs, but the impressive burial tomb is through this doorway. Come, let's go. Okay, uh, we can see the impressive uh, burial tomb uh, to my left, uh, now behind me. 
It is very impressive. Uh, this burial tomb has been dated to uh, the first century, uh, the first century of the Common Era, um, and it is commonly called the Tomb of the Kings. And that's because mistakenly years ago, centuries ago, this was thought to be the tombs of the kings of Judah. It has now been dated, as I said a moment ago, to the middle of the first century, um, and it has been attributed to Queen Helena of Adibia. Adibia? Well, actually, we'll say, give it the modern name, Queen, Queen Helena of Kurdistan. Just so you know, we're going to be meeting another Queen Helena today. Um, and according to the tradition, this is actually told to us by um, uh, Josephus, um, uh, Queen Helena, she converted to Judaism and she came here to Judea, the name of this place at the time, and uh, she decided that she and her family, she wanted to be buried here, and so uh, she built this wonderful tomb. There is a differing opinion. There are those who believe uh, that this tomb was actually built by King Herod Agrippa, uh, the grandson of King Herod the Great. Quite wonderful. The Tomb of the Kings. At the moment, as I said a moment, uh, I said a moment ago, uh, that this site today is controlled by the um, uh, French consulate. Uh, in the mid 1800s, it was actually bought uh, by a Jewish family uh, from France, and then they uh, gave it over to control of the uh, French. Uh, consulate or the French government on the condition that they would hold it uh, for uh, the Jewish people. And so today, in order to come in, it's not open uh, that open that often. It's only open uh, two days a week. You have to make an appointment ahead of time uh, with the French consulate. On to our next site. Yeah, stop looking at my ass. <laughs> Okay, uh, we've arrived at our next uh, spot, the um, Queen Helen Coptic Orthodox Church. Coptics are um, uh, Egyptians, and we are going to see what they have beneath the church underground. So follow me. We're now going down into what is referred to as Queen Helena's um, cistern. You can see the sign here. Um, this, of course, is a different Queen Helena than who we met earlier um, outside to the north of Jerusalem. Um, uh, this is um, the Queen Helena who discovers uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is uh, just outside uh, this church here. Uh, she's the one who discovers um, the three most uh, holiest sites, three holy sites, I should say that again, uh, in Jerusalem. And beneath this church, we have this wonderful first century um, sister. So let's go down. This is about as far down as we can go because there is still water in here. Quite amazing. Okay, uh, again, a first century cistern uh, which was used to store water um, 2,000 years ago. Okay, let's go back up again.
Welcome to our last stop on this um, short tour today. Uh, we're at, at we're at at what is called uh, the Small Whaling Wall. Um, uh, this is a part of the um, uh, Western Wall, and it is uh, not really uh, visited by that many people. We can actually see it right here, as well as the greater part of it is up here ahead of us. Okay, quite interesting. There isn't anybody here today. Uh, which is always uh, nice to have this place to ourselves. Uh, without a doubt, this is part of the Western Wall. Actually, the truth is that only these uh, two lower, the first two lower courses here are part of the Western Wall. Everything above it was uh, later additions or rebuilt by uh, probably the Muslims who came here in the Middle Ages. But this is part of the Western Wall. It is open to the public, and as you can see, it's very small, it's very intimate. One last thing. Um, this is the way the Western Wall looked prior to 1967 when the Jordanians controlled Jerusalem. Um, anyways, if you like this tour and you would like to get more information about Jerusalem, then please feel free to contact me and, of course, um, uh, like and, and um, subscribe. Anyways, thank you for joining me.